Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're gonna take at the conclusion of all this mirrorless uh, release. So we're gonna go at Nikon versus Canon. So let's dive right into it. Before we understand this Canon versus Nikon, we have to understand how the heck we ended up here. So first thing is stagnation. Nikon and Canon both has become so big that they were not innovating anymore like uh, Canon cameras were like innovating groundbreaking and then it became eh, just stagnant and this happened with the uh, Nikon also Nikon flat out ignored uh, their flat out useless uh, autofocus system in live view they did not polish it like both Nikon and Canon they were like yeah we, we are so big that we don't have to innovate not polish so basically even though you can get great photos and make a living out of those cameras it was not feeling like a new thing it started to feel like a chore you need new things in your life like if there is a new better camera you will enjoy your work more like and you will upgrade every five six years you need new new things and if you use the same old camera for 10 20 years first only few people can do that and why should you like this is a consumer world give us good products they did not and then market crash happened as you can see this is the images that i'm showing you their stock images they never peaked after 2007 basically 2007 both of them canon and nikon both of them suffered idiotically after the crash and after that they never reached the same uh, basically power they used to hold over market in terms of finance so after this they invested heavily on diversifying their portfolio and many of you know canon jumped into movie cameras and they did not have that much success but this camera became uh, kind of phenomenal in uh, documentary industries low budget indie filmmakers so it did very good for canon and nikon jumped into microscopes uh, large scale uh, industrial optical equipments including silicon manufacturing and things like that so basically all these companies first they were stagnating then the market crash happened after that market crash they were this flat out diversified their uh, portfolio as it were so this is on them what happened to the outside world first the competition came into the market biggest competition to these company were youtube now you might say how the heck that is a big deal first of all photographers were not taken very um, out of context ever they were like okay wedding photographer uh, magazine photographer they were never like you know just photographer itself youtube allowed that to become a thing like where people are just uh, like me just using a camera and that's it that's my job so when this happened when enough people started making money off of it this became the vlogging world became a reality now Canon and Nikon, both of them were not taking it seriously. However, in that time, micro four third or four third sensor came into the market, which was using open uh, lens architecture. Basically, that sensor style is used on surveillance microscopes and other things like that. So it was kind of a predetermined industrial mount. So kind of an easy path. And Panasonic and Fuji, both of them just ran with it they ran with it olympus also and as you can see these two camera like they were specifically competing with canon and nikon so they even though they had a smaller sensor they flat out gave everything plus the kitchen sink and panasonic is known for that you are talking about 4k 60 frame per second they had it two years ago like at this point if you compete in terms of specification in terms of what can be done in a camera panasonic is leading the charge and if you're like uh, fuji is also leading the charge in terms of color accuracy which uh, everybody who has used it they say it's like almost better uh, than canon and nikon the only camera that is better than fuji that i hear is uh, leica but like a cost uh, arm and a leg and a kidney and eye so yeah i'm not going over that so these things started to take a, a very new market basically photographer was no longer just a photographer photographer is now a vlogger they started to buying cameras so they started to give money to this panasonic and fuji and at this time canon and uh, nikon is like okay something's happening this is the time when nikon released their one series canon was still like yeah yeah um, full frame yeah mirrorless is a joke now sony entered to the this the mess now why sony entered after the market at first sony's uh, other division as in sony corporations divisions were not making that much money especially their movie department as many of you know they're flat out not producing good movies so their profit they're zero their smartphone division almost evaporated so at this point sony was kind of in a big trouble 
now they have already tried these things and it was not giving them money so they went back to the camera now why i'm saying went back to the camera is simply because sony was uh, at one time or the another was providing sensor for canon and nikon now not every nikon and canon camera has sony sensors but sony in terms of sensor technology was so advanced that they know how to make full frame sensors because they have provided the best sensors for uh, nikon so when sony entered the market this changed everything because before that they had this idea okay you don't have a shallow depth of field you don't have like you know the full frame experience the moment sony entered the market everything changed at this point things became serious at this point photographers started to like yeah yes because these cameras were looked at toy like you know lol camera but this camera was serious and not to mention sony a3 which they were uh, releasing that camera on almost no profit they were like getting very little amount of revenue but the sole reason they did that is to simply capture the market and they successfully did that last year as in in 2017 severely large amount of new full frame cameras were sony this is why nikon and canon is like oh okay 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 we have to like you know release a competitor that's why both of them have uh, released unfinished camera basically I, i don't think they were aiming to release in 2018 i think the camera was supposed to come out in 2020 or something like that that's why the first time i'm hearing things like uh, production uh, you know not a production run firmware updates when, when was the first last time you hear about firmware updates from nikon or canon so sony changed everything so you have to also understand what position they were in you have to look from their point of view so first they have very large old lens lineup like this lenses this lenses you are talking about at least 15 to 16 lenses are ready in any shop like you go to any good camera shop they have 15 16 canon lenses they have 15 16 nikon lenses minimum and some big shops like luxury shops uh, luxury as in like larger retailer chain they could have offers of 50 right of course nobody has every single lens that's why i'm saying 15 16 and they have offers of 300 lenses as in like current live lenses so they have a very large lens lineup so throwing those things away is not acceptable for them and not to mention this is the reason why people get stuck into what they call ecosystem basically uh, your camera body is very cheap compared to these things one of these lenses can cost upwards of a uh, $2000 $10000 $15000 so and i'm not even talking about like you know luxury lenses these lenses l glass and uh, telephoto and they are idiotically expensive so you could uh, find hundreds and thousands of photographers that have like you know one or two camera body but they have like six seven lenses and their lenses are more expensive than the camera body so lens lineup was their greatest gift but also their greatest curse is like we can't just throw all that away then what the heck they gonna do with their existing lineup as in their dslrs and in canon 5d as in uh, d800 series cameras which is doing quite well so they are in a kind of very tough position we have a lineup which we will compromise if we release a very good jaw drop dropping camera we will compromise these things and what we gonna do with the lens so let's uh, see how canon answered this now canon i really like the idea they came up with the best adapter solution now canon's new lenses the l lenses not l as in r lenses uh, they're going to have a electronic ring which you can program whatever you want to do with it as in you can uh, make it to so it controls the aperture so it controls the iso or exposure composition so it's kind of awesome but uh, what about your own lenses canon is like don't worry about it buy our uh, adapter which has the electronic ring and maybe you are like okay i don't like that electronic ring in a touch screen camera i don't really need that kind of settings uh, how about nd filters boom this is a godsend for video photographer but canon being canon canon is like uh, in recent year canon being started to being hated for the fact that they unnecessarily uh, complicate their uh, product lineup basically releasing camera where they should not release camera the whole old way of the system was they will release a new camera reduce the price of old camera and that's how it was going rather than starting to release very 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 low end camera like specifically uh, d4000 uh 4000d or something like that that is so low end camera as in the lens mount is plastic so suffice to say many people started to criticize canon for this sort of aspect why you are making unnecessarily cheap things here also why they made this nobody knows like if you are making these two imagine you did not had this in the market 
and you might say okay these are expensive again these are expensive because you are wasting your tooling your production line capacity on producing this imagine if they had not made this simply had these two how would have people reacted people were like holy crap if you buy a canon adapter for your canon system every lens ends up with an electronic ring or every lens ends up with a filter system so they had awesome solutions but they unnecessarily fragmented it and even if this was like given in the box it was like let's say this is a very cheap they are just gonna you know give it in the box that would have been awesome but they didn't do that also so this is canon and this lens is these things are so expensive i have canon uh, uh, 70 to 300 millimeter lens new new version which uh, has focus by wire and all that it's a good lens i'm happy with it however that lens like that is one kg lens is more cheap than these things this is canon the canon is like known for charging stupid amount of it now canon is also known for their autofocus so this camera will give you the best autofocus out there and they also added flip out screen like one i'm using right now 800d so awesome but canon being canon they handy it as in that is the full frame sensor and that red square that's how much you will get in 4k basically that is smaller than a micro four third basically flat out by panasonic if you want to use uh, 4k they literally inherently sat down it's like yeah let's just cripple our camera let's just let's just not give that why uh, in my video about Canon, you can check out here, I specifically specified because of their Cine lineup, if they started to give everything they could give in this sort of camera, I'm not talking like, you know, magical features of like, you know, having XLR outputs and things like that, just the features they can inherently give or basically made a Panasonic clone with full frame, they would have destroyed their own Cine lineup because any documentary uh, photographer, not every single one of them, but most of them will be like, yeah, I rather have few cheap lenses than uh, pardon me, few cheap cameras than one epic camera. Like multiple sh angle shots are always better looking than you know, you having one super awesome lens. So for that reason, knowing full well that if they give everything out in the full frame camera, their scenic camera will take a hit. Not everything will be destroyed, but it will take a hit. So protect their high end lineup, they compromised it, they handicapped it. And not only that they handicapped it in terms of single card slot basically dual card slots at this point and this year is becoming like a statement it's like a airbag system in your car you're supposed to have it especially for a camera that is costing more than two thousand dollar sony panasonic fuji uh, even nikon and canon their high-end cameras dslr as in all of them have this they removed it just so the DSLR line does not get compromised because the moment they had given that people would have started using this specifically Canon the people have started flat out started using it in you know wedding and all that but nobody buy their uh, DSLR so to protect that old lineup not to protect their lenses lineup to protect their DSLR they did that they handy the camera in two ways first dual card slot and second crop in 4k so this is Canon. So I love the idea of uh, the adapters they came out. However, everything other than that is just lame. Even in this adapter, why the heck this cost $400? Why? Now we come to Nikon. So Nikon did something interesting. Because Nikon does not have a Cine lineup, they were uh, kind of more free. And Nikon became the first uh, camera in Canon versus Nikon debate to give you 4K full frame readout. So you got that. Nikon was like pushing it. However, just to protect their D800 lineup, they also handicapped this camera also. Basically, single slot. And most of you who will say like, okay, the card does not fit. Why the heck their professional line, which uses this XQD card, why the heck they have dual card slot? It is a very necessary feature. Heck, even if you don't use it for, uh, let's say, redundancy, you may want to use it for, um, you know, larger capacity because card sizes are very expensive. If you want to go from 256 GB card to 512, the price is not double, price is six to seven times more. So it's cheaper for you to have two cards, two lower capacity card, and you get, uh, you know, what they call overflow setting where you only use one card. Once it's full, you use second card. They could have done that and they do that in their DSLR. If it was that safe, they would not have done that in their DSLR, but they do it. So inherently, they also handicapped their camera and uh, they give this weird flip out screen which makes sense in canon uh, pardon me in nikon d800 series simply because there are buttons on the side so they can't actually have a hinge because they have to remove the buttons but in this there was no such thing this literally looks like they copy pasted the hinge from d800 so they handicapped it knowing full well because if they have unlocked it 
basically given a flip out screen or a dual card slot flat out nobody would buy d800 even though it has better autofocus better low light capability the usability of the camera like this camera versus that camera is would have been night and day everybody loves electronic viewfinder so the full frame video is the nikon's best bet at this point and the fact that you figured out in body image stabilization as you can see in this image you have to understand lens image stabilization can only work in two axes it does not matter how much supercomputer data you are putting into it it still can handle only two axes axes being x and y so that for that reason when everybody is saying like you know oh, canon has better image stabilization it does not matter it can only handle two axes now in body image stabilization can handle few more access uh, basically it's uh, it can make the sensor like let's say this is a sensor it can make the sensor go like this that is which axis in this that is roll roll axis then you have your axis which yeah your is like this basically you go like this if your camera goes like that that is your axis and then you have pitch axis which is like this so basically these three axes no matter what you do you can't get from your lens for that reason ibus is becoming more and more popular and the fact that sony did that ibus thing in full frame this changes the whole thing so nikon i'm uh, more happy that nikon got ibus because giving a flip out screen is much easier giving a dual card slot is much easier than creating ibus technology so suffice to say if i have to put my money on i am hopeful that nikon can because they don't have cine lineup to protect they may give us a better camera in the next generation but that for that you have to wait 3 years so so current state of things not good basically at this point flat out you have to buy a sony and that's why i'm not considering their lenses because if you were going to buy a new lens setup buy sony flat out just buy the if you have old lenses you have to use adapters that's why i was focusing on adapters and nikon adapter has no fancy things and flat out they were not also packing it up with a box where it's like buy this and you get the adapter free so i'm really not happy with the fact because they were crippling their own camera they were like you know we, we just going to give you as little as we can so for that reason i'm kind of disappointed as a consumer and as you can see i am actually relying on this to make a living out of it so i'm really not happy with this how the things turned out so this was my presentation i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you did it dislike it and uh, i would suggest you leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of camera tuesday and please subscribe press the bell icon if you are free and as always thanks for watching